Hello and welcome back to another video. In this problem, we're finding the nth derivative of each function by calculating the first few derivatives and observing the pattern that occurs. So let's see what that means. For this first one, a, we have f of x equals x to the n. We have a power function here, simple enough to find the derivative. You bring down the exponent, and then your new exponent is the old one, minus one. Let's find the derivative of that. Take out your coefficient first, multiply it by the exponent, and then the old exponent minus 1, so n minus 1 minus 1 is n minus 2. Taking the next one, third derivative of x, our coefficient is now n times n minus 1. You bring down your exponent, n minus 2, and this is, to the, is x to the n minus 2 minus 1. Again, you have to subtract 1 each time in the exponent. So this is x minus 3. So what would the nth derivative, fn of x, equal? Well, it would be n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3, and so on. And in the first derivative, there's just one of these terms. In the second derivatives, there's two. We have n and n minus 1. In the third derivative, there's three. So in the nth derivative, there's going to be n of these. And if we're starting at n and we're going downwards, after subtracting 1 n times, you're basically doing n minus 1 times n. Since you're subtracting by 1 n times, which is n minus n, which is 0. So this is going to go all the way down, not actually to 0, but to 1. And then we have x to the n minus. For the first derivative, it's minus 1. The second derivative, it's minus 2. The third derivative is minus 3. So x to the n minus n. So the nth derivative of x is going to be this product right here, which you'll notice is the factorial of n, times x to the n minus n is x to the 0, which is just 1. So this is just multiplied by 1, so we can just ignore it. So the nth derivative of this function is n factorial. So we can do a similar thing with this next one. We have b, f of x is equal to 1 over x. I'm going to write that as x to the negative 1. Um, if you think of this as 1 over x to the 1, you're moving it into the denominator and therefore multiplying its exponent by negative 1, just so we can get it in the form of a power function. From here, we're taking the derivative. Again, you bring down the exponent and subtract 1 for the new exponent. So bring down the negative 1, subtract 1 from it to get negative 2. The second derivative going to be keep the coefficient, bring down the exponent, subtract 1 to get the new exponent. Third derivative, again we should see the pattern here, negative 1 times negative 2 is our coefficient, make it a little bit clearer by doing that, bring down the exponent, x to the negative 4. So what would the nth derivative look like? Well, it would be for if we notice the co coefficient of this, for the first derivative, it's negative 1. For the second derivative, it's negative 1 times negative 2. For the third derivative, it goes up to negative 3. For the fourth one, it would go up to negative 4. So for the nth one, it goes negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, all the way up to negative n. And this is going to be x times x to the negative n minus 1, right? Because the first derivative not x to the minus 1, it's x to the minus 1 minus 1. So, this is going to be f and x equals. Notice this is the negative factorial. So for, in this case, this would be, the coefficient is negative 1. In this case, it's positive 2. In this case, it's negative 6, because you notice the number of negatives is changing, so they're canceling each other out and uncanceling and so on. So we don't know if it's negative or not. But notice this pattern of 1, 2, 6. This is still following the factorial. It's just it might be negative or not. So let's just write in the factorial. And it's positive or negative. This is not how you're going to leave it, but just so we remember not to forget it. This is the positive or negative factorial times x to the minus n minus 1. So given that n is some value that we don't know, how are we going to find out whether it's negative or positive? 
Well, if you notice, if we just write these co the coefficients of these values next to them, negative one, positive two. Negative six would be positive 24 after that. You notice when n, the number of derivatives we've taken, is odd, the um, coefficient is negative. When it's even, the coefficient is even, is um, positive. That's because you're multiplying by an odd number of negative numbers, and that's going to give you a negative number. Or you're multiplying by an even number of negative numbers, which is going to give you a positive number. So the way we do this is we say we're going to multiply this by negative 1 to the n. And this might not make sense to you. This might have been something that you've seen before. But this is just something to remember that you can do. Because if negative 1 is to a positive power, let's say to the second power, then this, is, this, this term is positive, and the rest of it will be positive. If it's to an, even, it's to an odd power, then it's going to be negative, and then the rest of this is going to be negative, so it follows this pattern. So that's just something you can remember how to do. Getting this into a proper form with positive um, exponents, we get the nth derivative of x is equal to negative 1 to the n n factorial over turning this, multiplying this by negative 1 to bring it down into the denominator, we get n plus 1. So this is the nth derivative of this function, and this is the nth derivative of that function. As always, thank you for liking and subscribing, and I'll see you in the next video.